In this video, we're going to look at changing slopes and y-intercepts inside of word problems. And the objective is that by the end of this video, you should be able to work some word problems where the slope and the y-intercept are changed within the problem. Let's take a look at our first problem. And I've got a set of instructions that we're going to go through to help answer these questions. But as with all word problems, you may have your very own way of thinking about it and arriving at the correct answer, and that's completely okay. Your thinking and the way you work the problem is what's important. So you might want to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can work out this problem on your own. There are three problems total, so you want to make sure that you work through all three problems before moving on to the quiz. So for the first question, I ask that you please read the entire question. So let's go ahead and do that. And the first reading, we're just trying to get an understanding of the overall idea of the question. So students at a school will sell hats to raise money. There's some hats left over from last year, and 20 boxes of hats will be ordered this year. When the order arrives, the total number of hats the students will have can be determined using the function f of x equals 48x plus 37, where x represents the number of boxes ordered. If the number of hats per box changes so that this situation is modeled by the function h of x equals 24x plus 37, then how many fewer hats will the students have available to sell if they still order 20 boxes? So general idea, they're selling hats to raise money, they have to order 20 boxes, and we're given two different functions to take a look at in order to figure out the total number of boxes that they can order. And we have a first function, we have a second function. So again, ordering hats to raise money seems like the general gist of the word problem. Let's take a look at what the question's actually asking us. And it's a great idea to underline your question when you're working through the problems. So for this one, let's take a look at the question and we'll notice that the question is saying, how many fewer, and I'm going to circle that word fewer, will the students have available to sell if they still order 20 boxes? And the rest of the question was if the number of hats per box changes. So we know that the number of hats per box is going to change. And for me, I'm going to circle that word changes because that lets me know that something's changing from one situation to the next so that the situation is modeled by the function h of x equals 24x plus 37. So again, the question is saying, looks like the number of hats per box is changing, and how many fewer hats will we have available? So something's going to happen that's going to make us have fewer box, fewer hats. So let's reread the entire problem, and happens. this time let's circle the information we think is important. We're either going to circle it or highlight it. And then we're going to ask ourselves how we can use this information to answer the question of how many fewer box or hats can we have available to sell if we still order 20 boxes. So students at a school will sell hats to raise money. I'm going to consider that not so important math-wise. I'm going to cross that out. There's some hats left over from last year. There's nothing really going on in the situation that I read about the hats from last year. There are 20 boxes of hats ordered this year. So I'm going to box that. There are 20 boxes of hats. When the order arrives, the total number of hats the students will have can be determined using the function. Oh, they're going to give us an equation. That's almost always important. Let's go ahead and highlight our equation in blue. f of x equals 48x plus 37 where x, it's always important to underline your x and what it means. So x represents the number of boxes ordered. That's so important when they tell us what x is, and I'm actually going to write that down. x equals number of boxes ordered. And that's for the function f of x equals 48x plus 37. If the number of hats per box changes so that the situation is modeled by the function, oh, they're going to give us another equation. Okay, let's highlight that or underline that. 24x plus 37. So f of x is now going h of x. Oh, they changed the function on us. So we're not going to use f of x. We're going to use h of x is equal to 24x plus 37. 
then how many fewer hats will the students have available if they still sell or if they still order 20 boxes, so fewer hats. Well, it's still a little bit hazy. I'm reading the question. I know I'm given two equations now, and I know that something's going to cause me to have fewer hats. This is what we had originally, and this is what changed. And I know that x represents the number of boxes ordered. Well, since I know what x represents the number of boxes ordered, that means that I can substitute the value of x into x in my equations. What do I go ahead and do that? And let's see, number of boxes ordered. Does it tell me anywhere in the question the number of boxes? So I read back through there and it says, so if they, okay, they're ordering 20 boxes. So for my first equation, f of 20, you don't really have to worry about that first part is equal to 48 times 20 plus 37. Go ahead and get your calculators out. You can type that out. 48 times 20 plus 37. I'm typing that in my calculator now. And I get 997 boxes, or excuse me, hats. So 997 hats. And if I put 20 into the other equation, I get 24 times 20 plus 37. Let's type that in our calculator. 24 times 20 plus 37. And that gives me 517 hats. So I took the value of x they gave us, 20 boxes. I put it in the two equations, and I found out for the first equation there were 997 hats. For the second equation, there were 517 hats. Oh, I think I can use that information to find out how many fewer hats I'll have available. All I have to do is do no Now the next question is going to be similar. An airplane altitude and feet during its descent for landing can be found. <laughs> Again, you might want to read this out on your own, try it out on your own, and then work it out and press play to see the answer to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. So an airplane's altitude and feet during its descent for landing can be found using the function f of x equals negative 300x plus 30,000, where x represents the horizontal distance in miles from where the plane begins its descent. After new government regulations become law, the airplane's descent will be modeled by the function g of x equals negative 300x plus 30,500, which statement describes this change. The airplane starts its descent from an altitude 500 feet higher. The airplane starts its descent from an altitude 500 feet lower. The airplane descends 500 feet per horizontal mile faster, or the airplane descends 500 feet per horizontal mile slower. Wow, that's a lot going on. So let's try to get a gist for what's going on with the situation. We have an airplane, it's descending, so it's, that means it's going down to land, and it gives us a function where x is the distance in miles from where the plane begins to, to go down. And suppose that something changes, new law, and the airplane's descent is now modeled, that means represented by that new equation. And we're supposed to figure out, since the equation has changed, which statement describes that change best. So what's the question asking us? Let's go ahead and highlight that the question is asking us which statement describes this change and the change is from this equation to this one and how that's affected in the actual situation. So we're going to go ahead and reread the entire problem this time. We're going to try to pick out important information and see how we can use that information to answer the question. So an airplane's altitude and feet during its descent for landing can be found using the function f of x equals negative 300x plus 330,000. Okay, so I'm given an equation. I'm going to go ahead and box that or highlight it. And x, it's always important to write down what x represents. x represents the horizontal distance in miles from where it begins its descent. So horizontal distance in miles, I think horizontal, that means left and right. I'm going to go ahead and put a left and right arrow right here. So that's the distance from where it begins to actually start landing. 
After new regular government regulations became law, the airplane says that could be modeled by the new. Okay, so I've got a new function. I'm going to go ahead and box that. Now I have to use that information to determine which of these answer choices is most likely true. So does the airplane start its descent from an altitude 500 feet higher? Wow, I, I don't even know where the airplane's starting to descend from or where it's starting to go down. Descend, let's go ahead and write down what that word means. Descend means to go down. So I'm not even sure where it starts to go down. Well, if X represents the horizontal distance in miles, that means that Y is probably the vertical distance in miles. So it's going to start its descent when X is zero. Oh, that's a bit tricky. Maybe if I substitute zero in for X, I can figure that out. Let's try that. So negative 300 times zero plus 30,000. So I'm going to find the Y intercept. That gives me 30,000. So the first situation, if we were to graph it, it would start way up here at 30,000. The other one has a Y intercept of negative 300 times zero plus 35,000. So that's equal to 35,000. Oops one less zero than that. So the y-intercept for the other equation is going to be 35,000. That means that the new equation is going to start higher up on the graph than the original equation. So let's see if that fits any of the situations. The airplane starts its ascent from now to do, oh, right there, 500 feet higher. So the change in government regulations means that the airplane's going to descend, descend from a higher height. Well, G can't be it because it started from a higher height. 30,000 changed to 30,500. Will it descend faster? Uh, that doesn't look like the case because if we were to graph this or to create a table from it, we would notice that the distance it changed over time wouldn't be any faster or slower. And one way you can tell that out, if it says faster or slower, faster or slower is always going to be affected by the number in front of x, by the slope. And since that number did not change, you know immediately that it's not moving any faster or slower because that number in front of x is what affects how fast it changes. So it can't be h or j, it has to be f. That one was a bit of a tricky one. You might want to make a table in your calculator and compare the two using a table, compare the two equations, put the first equation in y1, the second equation in y2. You might also try comparing the graphs by changing the window. Or you might reason through it kind of like this. It's really your choice. And we've got one last problem to take a look at. The graph below shows the water level in a tank being drained at a constant rate. If the rate at which the tank is drained is changed to 3 inches per hour and the initial water level stays the same, how would the time it takes to empty the tank be affected? It would take 4 few hours, it would take 2 fewer hours, take 1.5 more hours, it would take 2 more hours. Wow, that's a lot of information. Let's go ahead and read back through that question and see if we can identify the question it's asking us first. Let's highlight the question in red. If the rate at which the tank is drained is changed, okay, so the rate is changed to three inches per hour, and the initial water level stays the same, how would the time it takes to empty the empty, okay, that's an important word, the tank be affected? All right, wow, that's a lot of information. Okay, let's go back through and highlight some important information. I may double highlight because I just got to kind of figure out the question and what it was asking. It looks like just from first look that we have water in a tank and it starts up here like at 12 and that's the height of the water. And over time, like as the time goes on, hours, 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 
as time goes on, eventually the height of the water goes down all the way to zero. So the water is being drained out until there's no more water left in the tank. And we want to go back through and see if we can find more information again. So the graph below shows the water level of the tank being drained at a constant rate. Well, that's important. It's constant. If the rate at which the tank is drained is changed to 3 inches per hour, I'm going to double highlight that because that's important, and it's changed, the initial water level stays the same. How would the time it takes to empty the tank be affected? Okay, so that's a lot of information still. Let's take it one piece at a time. If the rate at which the tank is drained is changed to 3 inches per hour, well, that means that we know the tank will be going down three inches every single hour now. That's important. So tank will drain three inches in one hour. And that's just my thinking on it. I like writing that out in my own words because it helps me process that information. How would the time it takes to empty the tank be affected? And we know the initial water level stays the same. Oh, that's great. That means the initial water is going to stay at 12. Oh, and it's going to drain at 3 inches per hour. So that means every hour it's now going to go down 3 inches. So after one hour, it's going to go down 3 inches. One, two. Oh, it's counting by twos. Boy, that was tricky. Almost didn't notice that. Let's try that again. So that means after one hour it's gone down three. So that's ten. That means it goes down two. Three would be right here. So it goes down to here. After two hours it goes down three more. So that's one, two, three. Okay. After three hours it goes down three more. So that's one, two, three. Four hours, three more. One, two, three. Okay. So after four hours it has completely drained. So this is the new graph, and this is the original. So would it take few four fewer hours? No, from six to four is only two fewer hours. So F can't be the right answer choice. It would take two fewer hours. Yeah, that's that looks like right. Let's go ahead and read the rest of them. It would take one and a half more hours? No, because it's taking less time since it's draining faster, it looks like. And it would take two more hours. No, that's not true either because it's draining faster. The green line, our new line, that means it actually drains in less time. So it's going to take two fewer hours and H must be the correct answer choice.